I just want the work to mean something. Hi Alok. Hi. You have been recently nominated as one of the 2018 Young Global Leaders by the World Economic Forums. That's huge. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. For the uninitiated, what happens now? What does this role really entail? So, basically, it's a five-year program. The fellowship is a five-year program. And over the next five years, I have the opportunity to study at various prominent universities around the world, you know, like Harvard, Stanford, Princeton, all of these. But in f uh, fields and in uh, areas that of my choosing. Basically, they tailor-make uh, programs for you uh, that would help you in your professional career, yeah. you know, in terms of, for example, sustainability or new building technologies or climate control or, you know, things like these. And then I have the opportunity to speak at um, Davos and, you know, the World Economic Forum yeah. conferences yeah. and basically give you, uh, shine a much larger spotlight on the work uh, that we're trying to do. So it's, it's a big deal. That's, yeah. that's really exciting. Um, so what does uh, leadership really mean to you? Leadership, I would say, would be uh, empowerment, right. um, you know, the enabling uh, or putting people, giving them the tools to kind of uh, benefit themselves, right. uh, make decisions to help themselves. I think that, in a gist, would, would what yeah, leadership would mean. How would you define the work Bhumi Patra does? Um, I would say maybe it's somewhere along the lines of uh, responsible architecture very value-driven work um, you know if 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 the project irrespective of scale you know it could be something as small as 100 square feet or as large as a million square feet but if it if it does affect uh, the community if it adds value to the community right. to the neighborhood to the society to the country then we definitely are very very interested you know I have to ask this but have you interacted with other fellow nominees of the, the leadership program uh, no not in person we have a whatsapp group oh. Uh, so which is constantly uh, you know through the night because everybody's all over the, the country or all over the world and then we've had one video conference call where everybody has kind of virtually introduced themselves to each other and they're all really really cool people yeah. so yeah I'm excited to meet them in person Netflix or Night Out? Netflix for sure yeah Peach or Mountain? So I'm a big water baby but uh, my wife is, is very much into like the hills and the mountains. So I would, I would say a mountain overlooking a beach. Qualities that an architect must possess? Uh, empathy and uh, a certain sense of discipline. I think those are the two cornerstones of the profession and everything else can be learned, you know, along the way. Your creative heroes and heroines? Vivian Maya, um, great photographer. Uh, Ray Eames, I think had a lot more dedication to the craft and helping Charles Eames, uh, Amrita Shergill, uh, Marina Tabasum as an architect in the subcontinent, yeah. uh, Richard Serra, uh, Yvonne Shunard, who's the, you know, the head of Patagonia, um, Bibi Doshi, um, and maybe Dave Chappelle. Uh, a design object you own and cherish the most? Uh, my camera, for sure. I carry it with me everywhere. Fujifilm. Uh, which I love, yeah. yeah. Uh, architectural projects in India that you think are notable? Charles Korea, the Gandhi Smarak uh, Ashram in Ahmedabad. Yeah. Uh, B.V. Doshi's studio, Sangat. Right. Uh, Raj Reval's Hall of Nations. Laurie Baker's India Coffee House. And uh, the Indian Institute of Forest Management by Anand Raji. It's a beautiful yeah. project in Bhopal, yeah. Uh, architectural projects outside India that you think are notable? Number one would be the Naoshima art project, uh, you know, in Japan by Tada Ando. The Quadra San Cristobal, the stables by Louis Barragan in yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Tama Art Library by Toyo Ito. Uh, Sayama Forest Chapel by Hiroshi Nakamura. Yeah. Uh, the Carlos Carpa Oliviti Showroom, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, that's again. <laughs> I can keep going. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Any architect's work that has made the strongest impression in you, and why? Shige Ruban, for sure. I mean, I think I've modeled our whole practices, you know, ethos and philosophy, by like the work of Shige Ruban. You know, his 
he's managed to strike the perfect balance between responsible architecture as well as in in the small scale and in the large scale so he, like you know he hasn't pigeonholed himself into only doing a certain kind of project so i have a tremendous amount of respect and and influence for, yeah from brutalist architecture your thoughts great to look at uh, no pretense at all about it but not so good for the environment yeah. is there anything the architecture schools do not prepare you for it's the opposite is there anything they do prepare you for uh, i you know i'm very i've been very vocal about this in the past i think close to 80% of what we do in the profession has to be taught outside a classroom um you cannot teach this 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 profession within the four walls of a classroom you know you need the practical know how the knowledge and all of that so it's fine for your foundations and your basics of understanding how to draw what you know the systems are in place but 80% of it has to be outside so yeah architectural education is doing a very poor job right now of preparing young professionals for the industry uh, fiction or non fiction i would say non fiction through the day yeah uh but fiction just before bed oh, okay. so i can the recent issue of serial magazine which we understand you really enjoy reading we've seen your collection of serial uh, is dedicated to sustainability what does sustainability mean to you at a personal level i think firstly sustainability is a very overused word and is misinterpreted a lot yeah but uh, to me it means uh, a balance you know moderation in your lifestyle uh, not consuming more than you need to you know the, the old ways of life were that it's you only you only took what you needed yeah. and if everybody lives that way then there are more than enough resources for us yeah. but that's not the case right With, to me it, it's more about moderation and balance yeah right. uh, do you also actively live a sustainable life with every passing year more and more so uh, i think as i'm getting older it's becoming uh I'm trying to consume as little as possible right. whether it's our clothes uh not shopping from fast fashion brands uh, toiletries groceries pretty much everything is now and you know we're trying to repair a lot of the stuff rather than throw it away upcycling stuff yeah. so try do you, do all your holidays revolve around architectural sightseeing or is, do you like to include other things in your travel itinerary as well we have a laundry list of things to see like buildings and so stuff what but what like what else is on top of that list uh definitely botanical gardens because oh, yeah. my wife is a botanical illustrator so for sure botanical gardens anything with, to do with parks and you know natural nature as much as possible is food on the list yes for <laughs> sure food is on the list yes okay yeah. uh, how does the, how does your travel inspire you man travel is the biggest inspiration it is the biggest uh, it is the a first hand experience uh, of understanding how people around the world live their lives right and the understanding of that human condition is the most essential to being an architect yeah you know travel goals or oh, it's endless but i i would say bucket list item for sure would yeah. be visiting the arctic circle yeah uh you know doing one of those expeditions where you get on you know these uh, science vessels and kind of go and actually see before it all goes away yeah <laughs> true <laughs> yeah uh, have you always lived in bangalore uh except for 2 years in new york yes all my life uh your top 5 to do recommendations for people visiting the city like ourselves uh food wise yeah. uh The, uh, everybody says the best masal dosa is uh, is janardhan but i beg to differ i think it's chalukya the coffee at india coffee house okay. caramel custard at koshis okay. it's great so that's food uh the the glass house botanical garden at lalbagh is gorgeous the 6am at the kr flower market maybe wake up at 6am and walk from the vishweshwara towers to kaban park that whole that whole stretch is 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 pretty beautiful that's yeah. great well, we have lots to cover <laughs> a work project that you're really proud of still a lot to do but i'm very happy with how we're going with the affordable housing projects a project you wish to undertake a museum uh what influences your work if you whatever i read i'm reading at the moment or whatever i'm watching listening to but number one would be travel 
Can you share with us the kind of projects you're working on currently? One is the Indian Institute of Sport in Hampi. It's India's first private training facility for Olympic athletes. Then we're doing um, a clinic and a care home for children with HIV in, in Belgaum. And we're doing a residential school, uh, international residential school in Karjat, Maharashtra, which is about a two and a half hour drive from Bombay. So those are the three we're completing this year. And the three we begin is a public library in Bangalore, uh, an airport mm -hmm. in North Karnataka, which we just won as an international competition, and uh, a high-rise tower, a mixed-use high-rise tower. Yeah. If you could create a public space in India, something that the whole community could benefit from, what would you build? Probably a park. I think, I think more open space, less built space. Do you enjoy reading architecture-related books? Any that you can recommend? No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think uh, I don't. I don't read. Honestly, I don't read a lot of architectural text. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of books uh, regarding uh, certain architects' work and study their drawings and stuff. But the best way. If anybody asked me for recommendations, I would give you like a laundry list of things to visit. Yeah. Because that's the best way you can understand architecture for sure, I would right. say. Yeah. Right. Uh, any hidden talents? Um, I did a small stint at the New York Times as a photographer, as a mm. freelance photographer, yeah. Um, so that would be something that I'm really, really uh, passionate about. What's the biggest career challenge you face so far? Working with the government, working with any any form of government, whether it was the municipal bodies or slightly higher state governments or whatever, it's uh, hitting a brick wall one after another, and you have to really to just get an inch, you have to give a mile. Yeah. 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 Aside from your career goals, what else do you hope to achieve? The change, you know, uh, it changes every year. It began with me being a very, very, like, I want to be the best in the world, you know, I want to build the biggest and, you know, very brash. And with every year you, you learn, you grow, you get knocked down and it constantly changes. So I, I think at this point where I'm at is uh, as much, I just want the work to mean something, you know, I want it to be really, really meaningful and, and, and so I think it's more of an impact based thing right now. It's, can I do work that will really last? How do you handle success at such a young age? With a high level of detachment, uh, whether it's the praise or it's the criticism, uh, I, I operate with a very high level of detachment. So the praise shouldn't go to your head and the criticism shouldn't go to your heart. Yeah. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Alok, for your time no and uh, for sharing such insightful things uh, about your work and your that life. That was great. Thanks so and much. Thank you so much for having us. All right. Thank